Welcome back, Authenticate fans. This is what we're building today. It is a P-51D Mustang pedestal, and it comprises five separate flight controls. We've got a landing gear, or land gear, as it is called on the 51D. I've got to apologize for the dreadful paint finish here. I don't know if you can see it too clearly. I can design stuff, but I can't paint. We also have an elevator trim wheel with a very nice action there. We've got a rudder trim wheel and an aileron trim wheel. And then here at the back, we have this flap sleever with six different positions. We've got zero degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, and 50 degrees of flaps. That is a lot of kit, isn't it? It really is quite magnificent. I should point out that unlike previous designs, I didn't build all this myself. I need to give a huge thank you to Stiggles on our Authenticate Discord. Stiggles essentially gave me all the CAD. He painstakingly created it from the original drawings, and I mean meticulously. My job then was to adapt it to use Authenticate components. And I'm pleased that there were very few areas where I diverged just slightly from the exact dimensions of the real thing. While I've been developing it, I've been using it with this P40 throttle, which is a great general purpose warbird throttle. It's got this really good hydraulic damping action that was introduced with this throttle. So that's the stand-in until the 51 quadrant's finished. Now I released the files for that a few months back, so grab those now. They're free, just download those and you can be making this very, very soon. The link is in the description to get hold of that. As usual, all the controls are mounted on these quick release plates, so they just slide off like that. So in just a few minutes you could be swapping between this 51 setup and say a Spitfire Mark 9. Uh, the pedestal by the way, so it's the same thing, it's just got two of these things on the back because that's it's quite a chunky unit, so it needs two for support. Um, oh, the other thing of course that you could be swapping this for is the Mosquito. Better subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. Now if you're new to this, these brackets and this tube, this extension thing here, it's called the Rig Extension A. So that's a sort of separate download with all the parts for this. Um, I mean that's aluminium tube of course, but the download includes the parts so that you can source them for yourself. And this super sturdy pole here, that is basically a monitor stand. So visualize that pole stuck up upward from your desk and you've got a you know potentially pretty heavy monitor hanging off it so these are strong with strong desk clamps we point it down and that provides a really good base for this extension here and then the arms which would be holding your monitor this is this cantilevered arm here is one of them and that's the base for your flight stick so that is just a thing you can get off Amazon and I'll include links for that too Authenticate is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering, and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. I'll get into the assembly steps in just a minute because I thought it would be useful to new people and also those with Authenticate experience if I talk about the PC interface. It's the usual universal hub and we're using the elevator trim, the rudder trim and the flaps and gear inputs. And there's one more as well because we need an input for the aileron so we're using the cowl and radiator input for this. This socket, it's actually turning into a kind of miscellaneous input. So there's two ways that you can configure this for your SIM, and it depends on whether you are using the Authenticate tuning app or not. Okay, so I've got the Universal Hub plugged in here, and I've got also got the Authenticate tuning app installed, but I'm not gonna be looking at that straight away right now, because the first thing I'm gonna do is just see how this Universal Hub is being recognized by Windows. 
And to do that, I can just launch Joy.cpl, which is a shortcut to the USB game controllers configuration panel that um, you'll find easily in Windows. And you can see in there that I've got three devices. Ignore the middle one, that's kind of specific to my setup here. The last one says Authenticate, and that's the one that we're interested in. Now, if you bought the circuit board that runs all this directly from Leo Bodner, it will say BU0836A. But I got this circuit board via SimKit Supplies. These are the guys where you can buy a kit with all the bits in just to have everything in one box to make these controls. And from SimKit Supplies, they give you the circuit boards which have been coded with the name Authenticate. And if I hit properties on that, we can now see how each of the devices on this pedestal is handled. So let's start with a LAN gear. So if I pull up the LAN gear, you should have seen there, I'll do it again, a little click on button four. If I rotate the elevator trim, you can see 11 ticking away. And then if I rotate it back, that's 12. Rudder is nine and the other way is 10. Aileron is five and six, isn't it? And then the flaps, so up is eight, and down is seven. So that is what you can use to map each of these controls to your SIM. Now the reason for the Authenticate tuning app is that if you think about it, there's, it's kind of a bit random really how many clicks you get here and how that corresponds to the real rotations that you'd get in the in the aircraft. So there will be, and I'm not sure the exact number, I guess I should, there will be a certain number of degrees of rotation that correspond to elevator full trim down and full trim up. And what you can do to get this absolutely bang on is use the tuning app. And the way it works is this. If I close joy.cpl and I open the tuning app, let's put that there, we can see that we've already got a mapping in place. And the elevator trim mapping says that it will remap the button inputs to an axis. These are button inputs 11 and 12. And you can choose what you want to map it to. In this case, I'm mapping it to RX. So if I hit start on that, and now I go into the joy.cpl and I select the vjoy device and hit properties on that. We can see that as I rotate the elevator trim, we're increasing the X rotation axis. And as I decrease it, we're decreasing the axis. Now, is that the right amount? Well, the answer is that you can control it. If I go back here and hit stop again, we can see that it's set a sensitivity of 90. If I set that to say 345, hit start again, and then go back to the VJOY device, now you can see that we get a greater amount of axis movement for the pulses of the input. So the way to do this, if you want to get this absolutely right, is use the tuning app, work out the correct sensitivity, and then map your elevator trim to this RX axis. And depending on what you want to do with the others, you can do the same. You can map these either to an axis or there is another option in here which is that you can take a trim which is based on button pulses. So um, here button 10 for the rudder trim left and you can apply a multiplier so that if it moves too slowly one button pulse would generate five button pulses. And there's a few other little parameters that will make that fine-tuned. So we're about to start building. What do you need? First of all, you need some 3D printed parts, of course. If you don't have a 3D printer, I've got a video on my channel that's called Introduction to 3D Printing. You may find that useful. And if you do have a printer, fantastic. All the files to print these, in fact, this isn't everything. That's, that's maybe half, maybe a third. All the files to 3D print that are free they're available in a download on authenticate.org and I'll put a link in the description. You can see that I've printed in three different colors here. Green is the most common. So if you're just trying to economize and don't want to buy a whole load of different colored filaments, green is the one to get. You could do it all in green. If you want to print in two colors, I'd get black. I did the trim wheels in black 
and you can also do the landing gear uh, in black. I did it in red, I've seen it in red, and um, it looks good, <laughs> it looks good in red. But I have done a little research and apparently it did not come out of the factory red. So green is a good option, black's a good option. Um, I did some other bits in red because red was, was in the printer. Uh, you really don't need the white, there's just one item in white and um, that could be green. And, uh, and then, yep, yeah, this is the flaps switch, uh, the switch on the flaps lever. And I've seen that in yellow, uh, I had some orange so I, I kind of printed in orange. But um, yeah, that could be green or that could easily be black. So don't feel that you need all those colours. You can also see I've done a little bit of painting. Um, I just got a little bit of acrylic paint and I did a pretty messy job of dabbing flap onto that. It's embossed so you, you don't have to sort of draw the whole thing out. You can just dab it on. And I did a really awful bit there as well as I showed you earlier. Um, also this, I'll put the link in my description if you haven't seen it already, that's the white lettering video. Um, this is indented rather than embossed, I think it's called debossed is the right word for it. Um, and then that's white silicon that's been embedded and that's, that's a pretty easy and, and really nice finish uh, technique that you can do. So uh, yeah, off the printer that's just, of course, that's solid black. So what else? Number two, hardware. Yep, you'll need some screws, some switches, you know, bits and pieces. Basically, that is what you need. And the download includes a list of all the parts and there is a page on the website which references the parts and has examples of places where you can buy them from. That is typically uh, eBay and Amazon and uh, one or two places that uh, you'll also need to go to. But the other option, and it should be the cheaper option because that is kind of the deal I've got with this guy, um, is just get this kit from SimKit Supplies and um, that's what you'll get. And I think the price is going to be uh, about £39 plus PMP. You've got the printed parts so you spend about 20 quid on that. So for about £60, £70, if you have a 3D printer, that's your cost for making this, pretty much. So in US dollars, what's that? Sort of 75, 85 US dollars. So that's SimKit Supplies and I'll put a link to their website on the description as well. Oh, and also, if you do not have those printed parts, these guys will help you source the parts as well. So you don't need a 3D printer, but um, you're probably gonna find it cheaper to buy a 3D printer uh, than to buy the parts because um, there's quite a lot of parts to print. And finally, you're going to need some tools. That's it. That is basically all you need. Um, in fact, you don't even need that because if you get the starter kit that comes with the circuit board and all the fundamental bits and pieces that make this work, it comes with a PH2 bit head, which is the exact size for a perfect fit for the M4 screws that are the most common one. And then it comes with a design for a 3D printed bit holder, which I find far better than that actually. Uh, it's a fast, easy to work with screwdriver. It also comes with a PH1 bit because often most PH, most screwdrivers, Phillips head screwdrivers, are a little bit chunky. They don't have that very fine tip. And you do need that fine tip for some of the screws. So it comes with a PH1 bit and then you just put that in a bit holder and, uh, and those are your screwdrivers you would probably find some kitchen scissors useful because we just need to snip some very soft wire and I also find it useful to have a little flathead screwdriver um, not for screwing things just for sort of pressing things down at times so that is what you need and what you don't need is one of these or one of these or one of these and no sandpaper, none of that stuff, no workshop tools. Folks, this is not a DIY project. This is basically Lego. Okay, I think it's time I started using this screwdriver. So we have our assembly steps. And they, I'm afraid they run to three pages this time. But kind of don't be alarmed, guys, because this is actually a very simple flight control. 
I mean, it's it does have 70, well, sort of 65 steps, but it's really five separate simple controls uh, just in one big box. So the wiring isn't especially confusing or, or tricky or, or anything. Um, it's just that there's quite a few bits to it. So that's the assembly steps and we have the wiring diagram which tells us for each of the five controls what the lengths of wire are. So I'm not necessarily going to say how long a piece of wire I'm using each time I use one, um, but you can get it from here and then how they connect and that's the order of the sockets in the side here. Um, and it's a very, that, that you shouldn't really get wrong because the way it works is it's always black gap, yellow gap, green, and it's the same all the way up because they're, they're really just switches, really, these things. So let's get started with that. So I think we can do this. I wasn't even sure that we, whether we could get this whole build into the frame for the, for the camera, but I, th I think we will just manage it. I've pushed the assembly steps off to the side here. Right, let's do it. Number one, join the trim gear panel to the flaps panel. That's the trim gear panel. That's the flaps panel. Um, if you're struggling which way to orient it, these things at the top with that sort of angled circle thing there, chevrony thing, that's away from you. Um, and then that's kind of a lot easier to do. And we're doing that with six M4 8mm countersunk screws. So we're going to use a lot of these things. So let me get all six of those in. Okay, that's the last one of those going in there. So that's nice and strong. That's number one done. Number two, join the trim gear panel. That's this one. It's because it's got the trim wheels and the gear in it. That's why I call it that. To the rear panel with another six of these M4 8 mils. So that's what we're talking about here. By the way, I've put some stickers on that. Um, it's the same order as you saw on the wiring diagram. Landing at the bottom, it's kind of in the order that the parts, the controls work their way up. So the landing's the lowest, the flaps are next, the elevator trim and the rudder and the ailerons kind of sticking up higher. So that goes on the end there. Another six of those M4 8 mils, so they go in like this. Okay, that is the last one of those. Okay, that is the whole footprint of the control here, the whole pedestal. Right, we're on number three. Attach the wedge to the flaps panel. That's the wedge. And it goes that way around. It's got two screw holes in there. So it goes like that, and yes, you'll notice it sticks out a touch at the end. Just to check you can see that, it sticks out a fraction there. Probably the easiest way of doing it is to sort of sit it down and put the wedge to it like that. That's number three. Right, number four, the big bulge. <laughs> I like that, it's kind of cool. So that is purely aesthetic, it doesn't do anything, but it sits on the front like that. And we we'll attach that with two more of this M4, 8 mils. So they go in the bottom two holes here. All right, I found that one. Get the next one in now, just slide, there we go, slide it until it slots in. All right, get those tightened up. And then there's one more, there's an M4, 20 mil. So that is, right, we only use one of these. This is where it goes. That's where the 20 goes. Okay. There we go, looking good, isn't it? One more, the aileron bracket. Here's the aileron bracket, that goes on the top. Now this goes on with a slightly different screw, it goes on with M4 8mm round screws. So, it's going on with these screws. So let's get, get those in there. That's good. Okay, we're up to number six. It says use the felt templates to cut and fit two felt pads to the case in the rear of the flap section. That's one of them. I've actually done it. Um, I'm not going to peel it off <laughs> and then have to scrape all the glue away. I'm just going to show you how I did it and I don't think you'll find it complicated. So what happens is you've got these templates. They're part of the download that you can print. You get your felt, you put that on there and you get a marker pen, a nice thin one is better than this sort of fat one here. So we're talking about a um, Sharpie and you just draw that round there. And when you've made the template, cut it out with your scissors, peel the back off and stick it on there. And then there's another piece that sticks on here. 
and that's all there is to it for step six. So we've put that to one side for a second. We're now going to make some rotten 6003 Fs. Rotten 6003 F means rotary encoder built around a 6003 bearing, which is quite a chunky bearing. Uh, and the F is for friction. So what you need is you need your 30 mil cork discs with the hole in, peel the back off and stick it over here. Okay, so there they are. Um, they are identical. Um, I'm going to use that for the elevator trim because that's got a slightly different assembly process. These two will be for the aileron and for the rudder and they are absolutely identical. So we've got those. That was step seven. Step eight is to assemble the three rotten 6003 Fs and that requires 6003 bearings, rotary encoders, pegs and caps. Um, but we're not going to put the wires on the back of this yet, we'll do that later on. So this is very simple to do, the bearing goes in the cap, the peg goes through it, this encoder, the pins will probably come stuck at right angles to the base, just straighten them out, in fact don't straighten them completely, have them at that sort of 45 angle so that when you drop them in here they just stick up a touch, in fact I'll, let me stick them up a touch more. That just gives you the right sort of angle to connect the wires. So that goes on like that and then this drops over the top and you just have to give it a little twist so that the D shape of the encoder there goes, drops into the peg. So there we go, that's one. Right, I've got two more to do. And there we have three rotten 6003 Fs. Okay, number nine, attach the trim bases, that's these, they're identical to two of the rotten 6003 Fs, so we're going to go with the black ones and do that so that the AK lettering aligns roughly with the pins. So that's because this can go many different ways around, three different ways, we want it aligned in this particular way. So there's the pins and there's sort of the AK bit, so that sort of way, yeah, and there's a hole there. So I'll just do that now and repeat it on here. Oh, 30 mil. M4 countersunk. Okay, there's one. Don't worry about the tightness of these for now. We're going to adjust them later because the tightness, the amount that you tighten down those screws affects, basically determines the friction that you're going to get with the trim. So we'll, uh, we'll do that later. That's one. And that's two. Okay. Pin towards the AK. Yeah, that's about right. Um, so that's two of those. Okay, number 10, we just assembled this rotten with another three screws, but there's no sort of plate on the front. So those are another, another 3M4, 30 mil. Okay, so there we go. We've got our aileron and rudder, and we've got our elevator trim. Right, the next one is number 11. We're gonna connect the wires to the elevator trim. The wiring diagram tells us what we need. It's this one. Three wires, the order is yellow, black, green, and each wire is 20 cm each. These are our wires, these are the ferrules, which is the method we use for attaching these wires, and this is how you do it. So yellow, black, green is the order, you just pull off a little bit of insulation, dab your finger in here and one of these wires will come off like that, and then slide the ferrule over the end and then what I find best is that I then press that wire into the channel. That kind of holds it in place so that now, so that now you can just crush that ferrule down. There we go, with the screwdriver. And that's the reason for the screwdriver. It's as easy as that. It takes seconds and it's a really secure fix. So I'll just do the other two. The only thing to watch for, uh, apart from making sure that you've got the wire properly clamped, is that you don't have any frayed bits here. What you don't want to do is have a, a fray of wire from one of the channels reach the other channel. So don't peel off too much insulation. Try and keep it pretty short. In fact, I, I, mine could probably have been a bit shorter than that. Um, and then just eyeball these things when you're done to check that they haven't gone across and sort of shorted onto the uh, another channel. So that looks okay to me. Okay, there we go, yellow, black, green. Double check that before you've finished. And then the rest of step 11 is to fit the rotten elevator base, which is this one, 
with three M4 countersunk 8 mils, and it goes like that so that the wires are where that slot is. And then step 12 is to do almost exactly the same thing. You're wiring up these two rottens. It's still yellow, black, green, as you can see here. It's just that the aileron trim has 20-20-20 as lengths and the rudder 30-30-30. So I'll do that right now. Okay, those are the wires on. And then to finish off step 12, we've got these plates, which go over the back like that. And they need more of our that way around, it's got a chamfer on the inside. They need more of the M4 8mm countersunk screws, so I'll get those in. Okay, number 13. Now it gets exciting because we're going to fit the aileron trim and the rudder trim to the case. And it goes like this. We drop the wires through here, so it doesn't matter which way. Yes, it does matter because the shorter wires, the 20cm, that's this one and then you just fit that like that and it drops in and then this other one pop the wires through and with the lettering to the front drops in like that and then we use 8mm roundhead screws to uh, fasten that that's 13, yep, yeah, 8mm roundhead how about that? now that is a nice bit of progress let's do number 14 we're going to connect the aileron trim, so that's this one at the top. I'm going to connect those wires to the RJ45 as per the wiring diagram. And the wiring diagram again says black gap, yellow gap, green. And it says we should plug this in to the top slot. So black gap, yellow gap, green. And I've pulled off some wire, stripped off some wire. That's, that's too much actually. Small amount, small amount is good and then we just rest that in the channel here and clip it down and then take a look and we should be able to see that the bared metal the bared wire is crushed between the teeth yeah that looks that looks pretty good so black space yellow okay that's good black space yellow space green and the exposed wire is crushed in the teeth clip that down Pop that through here and then fit the. I'll just turn this round here. You need to pop your finger underneath to press the little springy bit and clip it in like that. So there we go, that's our first one, that's the aileron. And then we repeat exactly the same thing with the rudder. So black space, yellow space, green. All right, they're both in. Now you might be wondering why I've only used three wires in each socket when there are where there's room for eight so I could of course I could have put both of those into one socket in fact the next one is similar I could have put all three into one socket and the reason is I mean you actually may choose to wire this slightly differently but the reason is for interchangeability because the input on the universal hub for the rudder is separate to the elevator is separate from the aileron and in this particular control they're all in one box and one wire would be fine but on the Spitfire um, the uh, the elevator trim and the rudder trim are a little bit separate and on another aircraft I mean the Mosquito rudder trim is nowhere near the Mosquito elevator trim so to avoid rewiring the Universal Hub I'm keeping things separated like that so you've got that flexibility uh, it just kind of means you need a few more wires a few more cables but that's the trade-off Let's do number 16, fit the elevator trim rotten, that's this one, through the trim gear case and it says wires point to rear, so that's what we mean by the rear, rear. so drops in like that uh, and fixed to the elevator disc, that's the elevator disc, so let me show you what's happening here, the elevator disc is on the front, like that, with 3M4 countersunk 14mm screws, so a little bit longer than we've used before. So let's put these in. Okay, right, so that's in, nice and secure. And then we have three more wires, and we connect that up to another RJ45, exactly as before. Black, then yellow, then green. 
Okay, that's in. That is the elevator trim that goes into the third one along. Put your finger under there. And that's in. Right, that is all the trim wheels in. We'll put the knobs on and the, le and the wheels and everything later. But um, that's a big step forward. Right, we're going to get on to the landing gear and the flaps because they use a different kind of component. So that again was a rotten 6003. These are McClicks. So here we have two McClicks. They look very different to each other, but they're fundamentally the same thing. They both generate clicks up or clicks down uh, depending on the movement of a lever. So this is the flaps one and that's going to be click, 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 click as you go from zero to 50 degrees and click, click, click down. And the landing gear one is just going to be click up, click down. So the click is multi-click and uh, in this case it's just one click each way and that is six clicks. So the step, number 18, fit the cork discs without holes. So that's these two, so we peel the cork off there and stick them right in the middle here, so I'll just do that now. Okay, that was number 18. Number 19, assemble both McClick levers with MR52 bearings, da 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 da. Right, so we're going from some of the biggest printed parts to some of the smallest. These are the McClick levers. They're identical for each of these two McClicks. And the way you assemble them is, and this is where it's very useful to have the tiny screwdriver to be able to balance very tiny screws. You need an eight mil long M2, it's a pretty small screw. And then you put that through the smaller of the two. You see one's kind of thin and one's a little bit fat. You put it through the smaller one like this, like that. Okay, see how that's going? Then you slide in a very, very tiny bearing. like that. This trick of kind of holding it with your finger like that works quite well. Then you slide the fatter half over the top. Well, if you can't slide it, you have to screw it because there's a thread in that plastic. So you're, you're putting it together like this. Okay, so there it is. Don't over tighten it. I'm sort of making, take a little bit off there, yeah. There's two halves fit together quite neatly now and that bearing spins very freely. And then you put another super tiny bearing in that side and now you take a 12 mil long M2, so a very again very thin screw and you slide that from underneath like this. So that's what we've got now and here the trick to stop this sort of flying about, hold it like that and then screw it into this hole here. Screw it till it's kind of tight and then the important thing, very, very important, loosen it off just enough so it moves freely like that. That's one, I'll do the same on this one. Okay, so there's the other one going in. Okay, and there's the other one. So that's looking good. Number 20, fit the micro switches. That's these, and you put them in like this. Okay. And then 21, we fit this hydraulic damper into this unit because this one's called an HIF, which is hydraulic damper internal. In the past, we've had the hydraulic dampers sort of external to the unit, whereas this has it completely built in, which is a nice, uh, highly functional unit. And that gets clamped down by this little clamp here, which goes over the top like that. And then what we have to do is and then we use these M3 8mm round headed screws and we clamp it down like this. Okay, let's wire these things up. So that is the landing gear lever, the red one. And if you put it this way round with the square boxy bit that way, you can see that we have two black wires which come from here and each of those are 10 centimeters long. Actually, that's these wires. Then there's a 20 cm and a 20 cm yellow at the top, green at the bottom. So we've got our 20 cm yellow and green there. 
And then on this one, let's point it that way, so it's like the diagram. This time we have two 15 cm black wires at the bottom, and then a 30 yellow and a 30 green on the left. So let me start with one of them, and then you can see that the other one is exactly the same process. So it's ferrules again, and I will thread a ferrule onto the black one. Now this is something you can get away with on this particular component, is to bend a bit of the wire over. It stops it flying off. So in fact I'm going to do that on both of them now. I always give these wires a twist to stop any frays. And then we push the black on here. Screwdriver can help just to press it on. And it should stay in place while you then do the yellow, which is on the top end. Nothing on the third one. Okay. Just line those up and then crush them down. And then check they are good and secure. That's good. Right, I'll just do the other one quickly. Right, there it is. That's the wiring for the land gear lever. And now I'll just do the same thing for the flaps lever. Okay, that's number 2122 done. Now 23, screw down the McClick 6003 HIF. That's this one. Hydraulic internal. Um, hydraulic damping internal. So we screw that down. The lid for this over here. That's the lever cover lid. And that goes on with four of these very small M2 12mm screws. Brilliant. So that does two jobs. It holds down the micro switches so they're nice and secure. And it also gives an extra clamp on these wires. So these are really well in there now and uh, nicely gripped. And one thing to check, make sure that that little lever is still moving freely. And the reason for the hole exposing the screw is you can just adjust if you think it's not quite freely moving enough. But that looks, that looks good. And I'm going to do the same thing, just two screws this time, to clamp down this lever cover on that McClick. So I'll do that now. Moving on, number 26, fit a 6003 bearing into the land gear McClick. So that's the red one. Goes in snugly there. And then fit the long peg through it. That's the long peg. And now 27, carefully fit the land gear cap and peg to the McClick base. No screws yet. Um, so we're not screwing it down, but we are going to fit it in place carefully because we have to sort of mesh the uh, teeth of the, uh, the bottom of that peg with the damper. And it should, and the cap should just sort of slot in. Um, you, see, like, you see that? Like that. Um, so that, that sort of cap area there. Um, oh, we can't go the other way around. Note that this bit here, that side is fatter than that side. So that side is flush with the case and that side slots in behind that little bit of a damper cover. So that, that's what you want to see with a very small gap there between the two of them. And, um, and then you've got the lever here and uh, you've got a really nice sort of tight friction combined with damping action there. And then you can hear the click as the um, little peg that's on here just moves that lever. So that's what happens for 27. Okay, number 28, we're going to fit this land gear McClick through the trim gear case with the lever away from the RJ45. So what that means is, um, so I'll hold that together because remember there's no screws on it yet. Um, with the lever away, so this is the lever end, away from here. So this flat bit towards there. So let's lift that up and just hold it like that, okay? And then I will put my finger on here, turn it over, and we can line up the holes from that red cap with these holes here. Didn't print very well, did it, that first layer? Um, right, fix the land gear cap and base together with three M4 countersunk 25 mil screws. So let's get those in, okay. Now again, the tightness of those screws determines the friction uh, in addition to the hydraulic damping friction. And you can 
experiment with that to get a good resistance. That feels pretty good. So that's number 30 is to just get the tightness just right. Okay, 31. Time to get the flap sleever in. And the way that goes is like this. It's hard to describe, just, uh, just copy the way I've done it basically. Um, that flat end pointing to there. And that goes down with 10 mil countersunk. Okay, that's the flaps lever base. Flaps lever click base fitted to the pedestal base there. Right, our final 6003 bearing. This one goes into the flap sleeve and the click lid. And that's what this is, so that drops in there. Number 33, we're gonna fit one or two ball plungers, and that's these, into the peg 9D. So the peg 9D, it's another peg, just like there was a peg in that McClick, but this peg looks very different, doesn't it, with this sort of disc on it. Now, the number of ball plungers is basically a kind of personal choice as to how much kind of clicking friction uh, you want. Um, I started with two, um, then I thought one was working okay, but I'll give you the choice. So I've recommended two in the kit. Uh, if you put one in, look at it that way with the flat towards you, I would put it there. There you go, presses in there. Uh, if you decide you want to get it out, there's a release hole at the back so you can push it out with a screwdriver. Um, if you want to put two in, um, then put them in a, at opposing sides. So put one in here and one in here, like that. Uh, and there are extra ones in here because for other designs and other situations you might want really large amounts of sort of click resistance. Right, so that is number 33, the ball plunger. Now we fit the Mipeg 9D into the McClick case with the fat, flat face of the peg towards the lid opening. There's the lid opening, there's the flat face of the D, like that, so like this. And when it goes in, there you go, you're gonna get a nice clicking sound. And now you can see what goes on because as you move it, so it is kind of a massive rotary encoder um, with just a lot more click friction. And you can kind of see now, can't you perhaps, that another ball plunger would give you more of a click resistance. But I kind of thought that was okay. So that's number 34. And now we fit the McClick lid to the base like that, with four M4 countersunk 14 mil screws. Now do these nice and tight. There's no sort of friction element to this. Um, just get it good and clamped down. Number 36, loosely fit an M3 flange head screw, that's this one, six millimeters long, to each of the posts A and B. That's A and that's B. So I'll put one in each of those. Number 37, joint all four black wires at post A with two more black wires. Now the two more black wires should be 25 centimeters long and the wiring diagram tells you that. And the way that we joint these is that we strip off a good sort of three quarters of an inch off all the wires that are gonna be jointed. That's two of them. Let's thread these blacks through from the flaps. So here we go. Right, so we have Okay, so there we have the four wires from the two McClicks and the two wires that we're adding to it and we give a whole lot a good twist. And then the trick I find is to make a little kind of shepherd's crook like that. Slide that underneath the flange like that. Move it forward, check you can see it. So it's underneath the flange, uh, clockwise, so that as you tighten this up, turning clockwise, you nip everything down. That's what you want. So that's all the black wires done. Right, number 38, joint the yellow and green wires from the land gear, that's that one and that one, with an extra 15 centimeter yellow, so we've got one of those here. Same thing. Now what we're basically doing here is taking away some of the functionality of this McClick, because this McClick will generate a pulse on the green for up, and a pulse on the yellow for down, or the other way around. Can't remember which right now, but it doesn't matter, because the point is the universal hub only allows one input for landing gear toggle, 
so it's a pulse for up and a pulse for down and it, and it, it just toggles between the two. Uh, you have the functionality on here to do both so if you wire things differently and you're using some different circuit boards and different arrangements you could keep both of these and obviously there's enough capacity in that socket to take the extra wire. But this is what we're doing here, it's going to be a toggle so we basically combine the yellow and the green, we do the same little twist thing around here, slot that around the peg, the, the post and um, tighten that down. Okay, 39, let's wire up the land gear. So we take one of these blacks and the new yellow, which has come off that joint and connect those up, very similar to before, except there isn't a green. So it's black in the first one and then a gap and then yellow. Black in the first, then a gap, then yellow. Okay, so the land gear goes at the very bottom. So pop that through here and Put your finger underneath and click that into place. And now we're up to 40, which is the final RJ45 socket. So it's the same as before in terms of black, gap, yellow, gap, green. So we've got a black. Let's thread the yellow and the green from the flap sleever through that hole there. There we go, black, yellow, green. And then that goes, let's pop it through this hole here into this last socket. Finger underneath. Help click it through. That's it, it's in. That, that is all the wiring done. Fantastic. I'm glad we're at that stage. Okay, 41, some fun stuff. Fit the flap lever crook, that's what I call that, to the main flap lever with the M4 countersunk 14 mil. So the way it goes is this. Um, yeah, let's look at it that way around. That way and that way goes like that and then you put the M4 in here that's good now screw the yellow handle onto the end of the crook there we go and then fit that lever onto the flaps lever McClick and that's an M4 round 20 and there it is how about that 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and back again. Okay, more fun stuff. We're going to fit these rudder and aileron trim knobs on now. Um, they have these flange mounts fitted to them. Now, there's two types of flange mount. There is an A and a B. Now, which one is it? It's, the, um, it's flange mount B, and B has a hole right through it, and A does not. So they go on like that, and we're going to save that for the elevator trim. So they fit onto here with three M3 countersunk 6mm screws. Okay, there they go. So they're on. And then we just pop these things on. So it's aileron at this end. Just line it up with the D, the flat shape there. Same here, line it up. And before you fit the big screws, you might want to, yeah, that's a bit too much. That's good. That's good friction, but that's too much. So this is where you can knit these back a little bit if they're too strong. There we go. That's better. Actually, I'd like a bit more. So you can play with that. That's good. Right. And once they're right and feel good, you need to use some M4 round 30 mil screws, so quite long. So that's fitted. And now it's the elevator wheel. And this time you're using flange mount A. So that goes on, same as the others. Get that fitted on there. And this time it's an M4 round 20 mil. So line that up. There it is. Now, I forgot to check the friction first, didn't I? But actually, that, that's just right. I'm happy with that. But um, you can take that off and um, adjust the friction and uh, get it just to your taste. So those are the wheels for the trim. 48 is easy. Fit that shaft over the peg. And 49 is fit that flange over there. 
and screw down the flange with these very tiny self-tapping M2 screws. Okay, just tighten those up. Not a lot of force on this, so you don't need to really crank these down. Right, that's good. Number 50, tie a knot in one end of the bungee cord and snip the excess. So, snip off the excess. Okay, there we go. And then, thread the bungee through the land gear lever, that's this. And it comes there. And through the land gear grip handle, that's this. So thread it through there. And then it comes out here. Okay, now pull that bungee very, very tight. Twist that out of the way and take your M3 round-headed screw, it's an 8mm long, and just tighten it through that hole there, that central hole. And what that will do, that will clamp onto the bungee and stop it sliding back. And now you can pull the bungee again and hit the scissors and everything is nice and tucked away. Now we fit the grip hinge, which is this, to the grip handle with three M3 countersunk 6mm screws. Okay, that's the third, they're all in, nice and strong. Now it's going to hinge like this. But first we need to press fit some bearings, some new 684ZZ bearings into here and into here. So just sort of twist that out of the way. Get your bearings and try and press them in. Now, now that went in, but it won't necessarily go in. And the trick if it doesn't go in is to put a screw through here and a nut on the end. And you're going to use a nut and basically pull it through with the nut. Now one thing to watch for is you don't want to apply pressure pulling these two together. So in order to, to, to avoid this snapping, as you sort of apply, apply pressure, put that bit, put that little piece in between here. And now you could really crank that down and you could pull the bearing through. The other bearing goes on this side and actually that pressed in as well. But I have had this before where it just did not want to go in and again, the trick then would be to put the screw in from that side and then put the, put the nut on the end and pull it through. And again, remember to put this little piece in here to stop these two snapping as you pull them together. All right, so those are the bearings in. And now we simply put that back where it should be. And it is a 30 mil round head screw that goes in from this side. So put that in here. That probably needs screwing through. There's some friction of the, uh, of the plastic that doesn't have a bearing on, which is sort of deliberate. And then at the point that it emerges at the end, this is where you want this screw here. So just, there you go, just get that screw on the end there. And, now, and then you might need to just back it off a touch. There you go, that's what you want. Now fit this lock plate, it's called the upper lock plate and it goes here and you need two M3 countersunk, very short 6mm screws in there. Okay, that's in there and then check that that moves freely. Number 59, fit the contour moulding. It's two pieces, those are the two pieces and they go like this, one here and one here. And you fit them down with seven M4 round 12 mil screws. So those are the 12 mils in and then the 20 mils and I forgot to mention that the 20 mils are also holding down that lock plate. So let's get that in there. And now the land gear lever goes onto that long peg. So you can see the action there. Now, this is probably a chance, actually, just to check if you're happy with the friction, because what you can do, and probably what I should have done is tested this before I put the flange on, if you feel that it's a little bit too weak, because obviously you've got a lot more leverage now, you've got that long arm on it, um, take that flange off and tighten up those screws a bit and you'll get a bit more friction against the cork disc. But I'm happy with that, so that goes on like that. 
and then there is a very long 50 mil M4 round screw that goes right through there. Um, it's nice and long because that gives it strength and uh, reinforces it all the way through the plastic. So I'll just tighten that on. Okay, get that nice and strong. Get that properly screwed down there. Um, right, that is, we are so close now. We are so close. So this is the action. Up, click here, click, and then the lock plate here should catch and stop the lever moving any further in both directions. Yeah, that's good. And then you're locked in, you're locked in up, you're locked in down. Fantastic, beautiful. And then just the uh, coup de gras, finishing touch, piece de resistance, on goes the lever round. That's just a press fit. And we are there. That was number 62, fit the lever round. Uh, folks, we haven't got the back on this thing yet, but now number 62, 63, sorry. 63 is now a time to give it a test um, because it's a lot easier just to find something if you don't have the back on it. Um, you should do fine. I mean, it's, uh, I hope you'll agree, it was kind of simple wiring, really. Um, so check that over, plug it in. You should be able to do the things I showed you at the start of the video. And then 64 is to fit the back panel. So you've got the flaps one, it's easy enough to line up. The countersunk should be uppermost, of course. So there, that would be that way around. And then you've got that last one. Let me bring that over so everything's in the camera. Um, and all that goes down with the same 8mm long four M4 countersunk screw. So let's get those in. Okay, those are nice and tight. Okay, that was 64. And then 65 are to fit the two Visa dovetails. That's what these things are. And that is the same M4 8mm countersunk screws. Okay, there they go. Here we are. This, this is it. Oh, let's lift that thing over. What a beauty. Landing gear, elevator trim, aileron trim, rudder, and then flaps. That is really nice. So that is step 65. And, well, can you see, I've just scribbled something in here. It says stickers. Because this is something I didn't have when I started the video. Because this just arrived. Simkit Supplies, the guys who are going to sell you the kit if you want to buy a kit from them, have had some stickers printed. <laughs> And I have not used, this is the first time I am trying these out. So, this is it, let's go for it. This is very exciting. So, this sticker goes here. There we go. Very attractive. Okay. And this one goes here. Yep, that looks good. And this one, I haven't talked about this, have I? On the original, there are two more levers. And I did debate about these levers. They may come on a second version. They're the air, the ram air and the hot air which I don't think people use too much. I believe they were used if there was kind of sandstorms and dust and you needed to block the air coming in through the external vents and sort of redirect it from the engine or something like that. But um, I felt and I got the feedback from people it wasn't hugely critical and we would uh, would do fine without them. And also the Universal Hub does not currently have a support for them. So that is a kind of to be completed later. Kind of depends a little bit on demand as well. Uh, put some comments in the video, please, if, uh, if you're really desperate for these two levers. And in the next version of the Universal Hub, which is going to have a lot more inputs, um, there's certainly an option to support it. But right now, that lovely sticker goes rather nicely there, I think. That is that. There it is. Mustang P51D pedestal. That was 65. 
let me see what we've got here. 66, congratulations. You completed the Mustang P51 pedals. That was quite an accomplishment. So be proud of yourself. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say I'm proud of myself. Um, now, don't be shy. Please take a photograph. And it, on the Authenticate download page, there is a section. I'll put it on the video here. where And you need to be logged in, or it might remember your login, uh, where you can just click uh, Add a Rating. And then you can just drag and drop. I'll show you that now. Drag and drop a photo of your pedestal and just share it. Please do. It takes ages to make these things. And just to kind of know that people are making them and using them and enjoying them, it's, uh, it's, it's very satisfying. It's very rewarding. So please do that. And um, yeah, and please share it. Please help spread the word. Put it on Facebook. Um, there's Facebook pages for DCS, I'm sure you know, and for MSFS. Uh, Reddit and tweeters at Fly Authenticate. Tweet us a photo of your flight control. That would be fantastic, and I'll um, I'll retweet that and share it. I'd I'd love to do that. The um, what are the last two little reminder things on here? Yeah. So if you're doing this first and this is new to you, you haven't made the Universal Hub, which I showed you earlier. There are other videos on that. I'll include links to that, and then setting up the rig. There's a link on that, uh, and then don't forget the tuning app. So you, uh, you wouldn't have perhaps have had anything to tune until now. So check out the tuning app and I'll include links for that. 70 steps. Or is it 71? Yeah, I'll have to add stickers. 71 steps. Well done, folks. You've done it. So that is all we have time for today. Um, I know you'll be keen to get your hands on that P51 throttle next. And of course, a really nice flight stick. I am looking forward to building that. Um, that is not something it's easy to get hold of, even if you pay a lot of money. Um, so I, uh, yeah, that will be a, a great little project to do the flight stick. Uh, don't worry, this stuff is being worked on, as well as a lot more. Um, I've shown some photos of uh, the Mosquito, and there are quite a few other projects in the pipeline as well. So stay tuned for that, subscribe for that, and I look forward to sharing more builds with you on this Authenticate channel in the weeks, months, and years to come. Bye for now, folks.